So in my last video, I built a reactive visualizer inspired by the recent Silent Hill 2 remake, and today I'd like to talk about how I set that project up, both in Unreal Engine and Ableton Live. When it comes to the assets used in the piece, I used a small variety, including Ultra Dynamic Sky for quickly dialing in the lighting, Ultra Volumetrics to get that nice moving ground fog, City Build for blocking up the environment, as well as the road and street light assets, and a bunch of free building and vehicle packs from the Unreal Engine Marketplace slash fab, such as City Sample Buildings, City Sample Cars, and the Modular Building Set. With these assets acquired, I first started by creating a 1km by 1km landscape to build the environment upon. Then, using the Road Builder tool set as found in City Build, I created a 1km stretch of road that eventually ends at a three-way intersection. I did this so the horizon line could be covered by skyscrapers off in the distance, which helps give the city both a sense of scale and depth, especially since the video only explores one long street submerged in dense fog. Speaking of fog, to get the silent hill-esque lighting dialed in, I started with an instance of ultra dynamic sky with maxed out settings on the cloud coverage, fog, and overall intensity variables. I also enabled the setting labeled Use Volumetric Fog. This setting is what will allow the usage of Ultra Volumetrics, which is how I got the additional dense layer of fog to sit on the ground. So with Ultra Dynamic Sky set up, I then imported the blueprint for Ultra Volumetrics. This blueprint more or less comes with everything set up as needed, with the exception of a few settings. I set the quality preset to Ultra, and the far fade distance to 60,000 as opposed to the stock value of 6,000. This expands the range that Ultra Volumetrics operates within, which is important in this use case as the environment is 1 km by 1 km large. From here, adjust the scale of Ultra Volumetrics to fit the scene as needed. I personally set the vertical height to 1.4 so the fog wouldn't be too thick and could then roll atop the surface nicely. Therefore, not obscuring everything that would be seen off in the distance. With these two blueprints set up, that more or less concludes setting up the basic lighting for the scene. Next, I started placing buildings and props around the previously created road. For the close-up buildings, I used the free modular building set pack as found on the Epic Marketplace slash fab, as it already had that grungy storefront aesthetic I was going for. Once all of that was in place, I then added a bunch of skyscrapers in the distance to help fill out all of the vertical dead space as the previously placed buildings were only 10 stories tall at the most. Between these two building packs, I was able to get the illusion of a full city for the visualizer to take place in. I then started placing various abandoned vehicles alongside the road to further solidify the feeling of everything being discarded and abandoned, especially since there are no active lights on any of the buildings or cars. These vehicles were from the City Example Vehicles as found on the Unreal Engine Marketplace slash fab. With all of this set up, the last variable to get sorted out was the reactive street lights as triggered by the pianos in Ableton Live. To achieve this, I used a custom blueprint that triggered a spotlight, a mission value, and simple light beam. I made a video in the past breaking down this blueprint setup in more depth using some custom Max for Live devices and Unreal Engine blueprints. So if you'd be interested in a more thorough breakdown of this variable, the link to that video can be found in the description below. With the street light set up, I then assigned each street light to a specific note. That way, as the sparse arpeggios play out, I'd get some Z-depth variety regarding how and where the reactive elements are being triggered from. Therefore, hopefully allowing for a sense of visual variety as the piece plays out despite it being quite minimalist in nature. To finish things off in Unreal Engine, I then set a camera up in the middle of the street and animated a simple straight path along the one kilometer road over the course of 15 minutes. From here, it was just a matter of recording the final output in real time with OBS as the Ableton session played out alongside the Unreal Engine scene. When it comes to composing the score in Ableton Live, it was actually a pretty minimalist track consisting of only five layers. The foundation of the piece consisted of this field recording I found on freesound.org, 
which was a city in the midst of a lockdown at night, which was perfect for that lone, desolate city atmosphere. I feel that with a minimalist piece such as this, having a field recording and or room tone makes all the difference when it comes to the subtlety implying a location and atmosphere, which gives a solid foundation to build off of. Next was the drum pad, which consisted of the tree tone instrument alongside some slow LFO modulation on the noise filter. This layer is what provided some nice low-end ambience to the mix, as the field recordings and piano tend to not exist in that frequency range, therefore helping fill up the mix even more. Then finally, I have two Spitfire upright pianos panned hard left and hard right, being sequenced by two instances of this awesome Max for Live sequencer called Sentinel. This was made by a fellow Canadian Max MSP developer, Noosrid. This sequencer is great as you can quantize the note selection and have it generate a new pattern every few bars or so. After getting all the trigger probability, pitch, velocity, and duration values set up, I let two instances of this sequencer run for around 20 minutes and then edited down my favorite bits that the sequencer generated. I love writing music this way, as it provides for a loose, improvisational feeling while never getting too repetitive as the piece is constantly changing and evolving. Even better when there's two or three instances of it, so each improvised part can provide counterpoint to one another. With all of that being said, this more or less concludes how I set up my Silent Hill inspired reactive visualizer using Unreal Engine in Ableton Live. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to improve things, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all my future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.